In this video I will show you some easy tips to create an organized sewing space no matter how big or how small that space might be. Welcome to the Sewing Craft channel. My name is Shireen Haynes. Being creative and teaching are my passions and I've been doing this full time since 1993. I post regular, easy to follow, step-by-step -step videos for sewing and craft and if you would like to know when I post new videos, click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon below and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me to spread the word that sewing and crafting are fun. Now let's get into organizing that sewing space. Time is so precious, so why waste the time that you would spend sewing on looking for and gathering your tools together to start sewing? Instead, get them all organized and keep them organized so that you are ready to start sewing whenever you want. Let's start off by organizing our important sewing tools. There is a wide variety of sewing organizers that are available, but I like to store my tools in a regular small toolbox because in here they are safe, neatly together in one place and easy to pick up and move around too. Let me show you how I organize my important sewing tools in this toolbox and also remember to look out for more of my videos where I will discuss the different tools and also how to use them too. Subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any of the new videos as I post them. This little toolbox has a separate compartment on top of its lid, so I just flip that little cover up and inside that compartment I store all of my measuring and marking tools along with my seam ripper and bodkins. Underneath the lid inside the box is a lift out tray and this is where I store all of my smaller specialized tools. The large compartment at the bottom of the box which is below the lift out tray stores all of the larger specialized tools as well as scissors. Now that I've finished organizing my tools in my toolbox I can simply close it up and then I know that all of my tools are safely and neatly stored together and more importantly they're ready just to pick up and go and take to wherever it is that I would like to go and sew. Let's take a quick look at storing new machine needles. I like to store all of my new needles together in small trays that have compartments. Now here I have a selection of needles in my trays because this way I can keep track of all my new needles and also know when I'm running low on a particular type of needle. I've labelled all my trays with my brother labelling machine. To store my used needles, I put them into a needle cushion. I never put them back into the new pack, otherwise it's easy to lose track of what is new and what is used. I'll put a link below this video for the video of how to make this little cushion along with its pattern as soon as it's done. Also remember to look out for my video about the different needle types and also the projects that I will use them on too. Also please feel free to join my mailing list at www.sewandcraftstepbystep.com where you will have access to free ebooks on various different topics. I like to store my threads in these suitcase type containers because once they are locked they are completely airtight which means that the air can't get to my threads to dry them out because dried out threads will cause a problem and they will snap while you are busy trying to sew. I also like these because you can stack a couple of these suitcases one on top of the other because they are stackable. Now if I open the container you will see that there's more than enough space in here for a good number of reels of thread. You could even fit up to three layers of reels. Now if you have space left over and you haven't stacked it with three layers you could even put your bobbin case with your bobbins inside this container. 
Now another tip, you'll notice that all of my threads are wrapped in a plastic or a vinyl. Now the reason for that is first of all it also helps to stop the air from getting to the threads and drying them out but more importantly it also keeps all of the thread tails wrapped against the reels so you don't have a big tangled mess of threads to deal with when you open your thread box. So if we take a look at this reel over here you'll see that it's wrapped in that vinyl and you simply buy the vinyl and you must buy the nice soft vinyl and cut it into strips that are 15 centimeters wide by five centimeters high. Now because it's nice and soft what will happen is you'll take your reel of thread and all you do is you make sure that the little thread tails are up against the reel and then you simply take the vinyl and wrap that around and because it's soft it sticks to itself so it won't come loose from the reel and then you pop that into your thread box. So all of your threads are nice and neatly stored together without having a big tangled mess. Now some other little important tools that are required for sewing is a good quality wristband pin cushion that simply slips onto your wrist so that while you're busy sewing it's easy to access your pins to pin your garments or your projects together and likewise once you've finished sewing you can remove them from the fabric and just pop them straight back into the wristband pin cushion. Now another pin cushion that I like to have handy is this magnetic pin cushion. Now the reason that I like to keep this handy is that often you have little tools that are magnetic that can stick onto this pin cushion, like for example little screwdrivers. Now I also like to, once I'm finished sewing, run this over the floor because often pins are inclined to drop onto the floor. So I just scan the floor with my magnetic pin cushion and then it will pick up any pins that might have dropped onto the floor. Now while we're busy sewing we need a couple of little tools like for example our little measuring gauges, our marking pens, a little pair of snipping scissors, our tape measure and perhaps even small things like buttons that we're going to sew onto a garment. So those little things tend to get lost on our workspace. So what I like to do is I have made myself a little utility box and then I just keep all those little tools that I'm busy using while I'm sewing inside this little utility box. Because it's so easy while you're busy sewing to take your little pair of scissors and put it down next to the machine and then it'll get bumped off and drop onto the floor. So instead of having things dropping off and sliding out of sight, I just pop them straight into this little utility box. Now I'll also post a link to this box so that you can perhaps make yourself some of these little boxes too. This particular one I'd made from a corduroy and then I just did a little embroidery in the center of that and then here I have another one because I have several of these for different projects and this is a slightly bigger one which is covered in a denim fabric so there are lots of options as far as using this pattern goes. Now here in this tiny little space I've got all of my most important tools all neatly stored together. So I've got all of my important tools in my toolbox, my threads and my bobbins in this stackable box and then all of my sewing machine needles and then my utility boxes with my pin cushions and my needle cushion. Now if you have a dedicated sewing space or a dedicated sewing cupboard where you can stack all of these items that would be ideal because then you can have everything organized and put into one small space. However, if you have to keep packing all of your tools together to move to a different room, for example, if you don't have a dedicated sewing room and you have to sew on the dining room table or in the kitchen, then we need to transport all of these things to that location. So I'm going to show you how you can stack all of these things together nice and neatly and move them easily. Now the easiest way to store all of those tools is to take a regular filing box 
With my filing box I've chosen to cover it in a pretty denim fabric with an embroidery on it and then I've made a little pocket on the front so that I can identify what is in this box. But inside this box I will be able to fit all of these tools. So let me show you how I do that. So I start off by putting my thread box at the bottom of this box. Now if you've got more than one of these thread boxes then you might have to make yourself two filing boxes. But if you've just got one then it's easy enough to put that at the bottom. And then on top of that I pop my toolbox. Now my toolbox fits in here nice and easily and there's still space for the lid to go on. And then I take my needles and then I pop those in down the side and then on top of that goes my little utility boxes with all of my cushions and then finally I just pop the lid on over all of that and there I have my nice neat sewing box with all of those important tools kept together. Now I've also covered a second box and this second filing box has my sewing accessories in there. So those will be all of the other little bits and pieces that I need to complete my sewing project with. So I will show you what's inside that box now. Here are a few ideas just to show you how to store all of those other sewing accessories. For example, I take the same little containers that I kept my needles in and then I label those like for example this will be my magnetic clasps and bag feet, my cover buttons, my little D-rings, toggles and then I have all of my snap hooks and then finally my little split rings. Now all of these get stacked into the box and then I'll use little round tubs for my press studs. So here I've got all of the different size press studs and then my safety pins. I also pop those into these little tower containers and then also label them so I don't know what sizes I have and then my buttons I always like to have a good stock of different color buttons for different projects so those go into these little containers so then I sort them by color and type. Then when it comes to my elastic I pop my elastics into a container like this so that I can see exactly what I've got. So I have my tracksuit elastic, my non-roll elastic and my swimwear elastic all together and then likewise I have one that I store my ribbons and my cords in as well. So now all of these will just simply get stacked into the box. So here I have another covered filing box that stores all of my patterns together. So whether they are garment patterns or craft project patterns, I trace them off, pop them into A4 envelopes and then pop them into my filing box. Use these filing boxes to create storage systems for a wide variety of things. For example, interfacing, embroidery supplies, craft accessories and a whole lot more. If you do not already have a cabinet or shelves to store your sewing accessories then you might like to consider having a small trolley made that is on wheels or casters that you can move around to wherever you would need it. I attached a small handle to the top edge of mine to make it easy to push or pull. I also added a hook to the one side of my trolley so I could hang my sewing and quilting ruler onto it. Then I also added another hook to the other side of the trolley so that I could hang my mini pressing board onto that. The top of the trolley can also be used to give you added space while you work. This little mini pressing board is also one of my projects to look out for. It is just so useful. Now if all of your supplies are neatly organized you'll no longer waste time looking for them before you actually get to the fun part of actually sewing. 
Now if you would like to have access to more of my videos like this with hints, tips, techniques and projects that are all about sewing, craft, decor or digitizing, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and remember to click on the little bell so that you won't miss any new videos that I post.